This is Animated Anatomy and I am Faris. What you can see here is the mandible that I have modeled. This is one of my first models. I paid close attention to all the details and I can guarantee you that this is by far the most accurate model that you can find in any anatomical software. Here lies the mandible. Let's remove everything else so we can examine this bone. The mandible or the jawbone is the largest, the strongest and the lowest bone in the face. It forms the lower jaw and holds the lower teeth in place. Besides your ear bones, which can resonate and make you hear, mandible is the only movable bone of the skull. This incredible bone pulled by the muscles of mastication can put a whole lot of pressure on the food that's being chewed. The bone is created by fusion of its left part and its right part. The midline where they fuse is the mandibular symphysis. If they don't completely fuse, you can see a little dimple here, and that's very common. Now let's explain the components of the mandible. The mandible consists of a body here and the rami over here. Let's start by explaining the body of the mandible. What you can see here is the anterior surface of the body of the mandible. Here you can see the mental protuberance and over here is the incisive fossa. This here is the mental tubercle and this would be the mental foramen. If we go a little bit more laterally, there is one detail I want to show you. You see this faint ridge coming from the tubercle and going upwards and backwards. It is called the oblique line. The oblique line is continuous with the anterior border of the ramus. If we look at the mandible from the inside, it appears concave. At the lower part of the symphysis, we have a laterally projecting spines. These spines are used as an origin for the genioglossus muscle. If we go a little bit more lower, we will find another pair of spines, and these spines are used as an origin for the geniohyoid muscle. Spines can sometimes be fused to create a single eminence. They can also be completely missing or represented by just a slightly irregular surface. Below the spines is an oval depression on both sides. Here on the side you can see the mylohyoid line. Above the anterior part of this line there is a smooth triangular area against which the sublingual gland lies. Below the hinder part of this line there is the submaxillary gland. Now let's remove the gland and let's look at the borders since we have studied the surfaces of the body of the mandible. You're looking at the superior border of the body of the mandible. The superior border is actually wider behind than in the front and it has 16 cavities for teeth. The inferior border goes all the way to the angle of the mandible right here. That's why the inferior border is longer than the superior border. It is also wider on the front than in the back. Now I'm going to explain the last component of the mandible and that is the ramus. You ever wondered how come your teeth can hurt? How come they're innervated inside of the bone? Well, you see this foramen here, that is the mandibular foramen. Let me zoom in. That's right, that's the mandibular foramen. Through mandibular foramen you have the mandibular nerve passing through and going through the mandibular canal, supplying the teeth with innervation. You also have the vessels going through this foramen. Medially and anteriorly on this foramen, you have this sharp lingula here, that is the lingula of the mandible. And the groove that you can see over here is the mylohyoid groove. Now go all the way back to the beginning. Remember when I mentioned the mental foramen here? 
Well, the mental foramen is the exit. An exit out of what? It's the exit out of mandibular canal, which starts here at the mandibular foramen. So the canal goes somewhat like this. You enter here, all the way through here, and you exit on the mental foramen. There are two more structures I want to point out, and that is the coronoid process and the condyloid process. The coronoid process is a thin triangular eminence, which is flattened from side to side and varies in size and shape. The condyloid process is thicker. It consists of a neck and a condyle, mandibular head that carries the articulating surface, which articulates with the articulating surface of the temporal bone, creating the temporomandibular joint. My name is Faris and this is Animated Anatomy. Me and my team worked over seven years to develop the Animated Anatomy that includes the entire human body in 3D and every single structure explained in my lessons. You can subscribe here to support our work or you can go to my website and purchase Animated Anatomy and all the lessons. Thank you.